When there's confusion about a certain topic, like whether or not the five second rule is a good thing, or whether or not vaccines cause autism, or whether or not the Black Plague was spread by fleas on rats, it can be really helpful to look at what the science says. For those topics, the science says yes, no, and maybe not. But it can be difficult for the average layperson to sort through sometimes contradictory studies in an attempt to find out what's true, what's valid, and what maybe needs to be looked at a little bit more skeptically. Luckily, there are a few red flags you can look for when you're reading about a particular topic or a particular study. Like, for instance, was the study published in a respectable peer-reviewed journal? Or you can look for conflict of interest. Let's say you're reading an article about a new mathematical formula that was developed that will help travelers book the perfect vacation. Your first hint that this might not be on the up and up might be that the study was sponsored by an online travel agency. Well, maybe that would be like your third hint right after one that's a ridiculous theory and two, you're reading about it in the Daily Mail. So red flags like conflict of interest don't necessarily tell you that a study is bunk. They just say, hey, there's something fishy here. Be careful. And that can be really helpful for somebody who makes important decisions based on science, but who isn't necessarily a scientist himself, like David Michaels, the head of the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, OSHA. OSHA is currently considering a rule change that would reduce the total amount of silica allowed in the workplace. When minerals are cut or drilled into, little particles of silica can be released and those can be inhaled. That can cause cancer or other terrible diseases. So, of course, to determine the maximum amount of silica that can safely be allowed in a workplace, OSHA will be looking at the science. Now, there are already corporations that are staunchly against stricter rules on this. Those are corporations like Halliburton or the National Association of Home Builders or the American Petroleum Institute. These corporations are allowed to present scientific evidence that they believe will be in their favor. And they're not new to this process. According to Lawrence Lessig of the Daily Beast, the American Petroleum Institute once asserted that all accepted medical evidence proves conclusively that lead in the environment presents no threat to public health. That's an understandable mistake, I think. It's only been about 2,000 years or so that we've known that chewing on paint chips can really screw a person up. David Michaels is very familiar with these corporations' track record of sponsoring pseudoscience that will benefit them. And because of this, while considering the silica rule change, he requested that any commenter submitting scientific evidence should disclose any financial conflict of interest. That wasn't even a hard and fast rule, just a request. But it was enough to scare 16 U.S. senators into sending Michaels a letter in which they say, Disclosing the funding sources of commenters who submit scientific or technical research raises questions about whether OSHA will use that information to prejudge the substance of those comments and could result in dissuading stakeholders from even submitting comments. In other words, they're concerned that being transparent about corporations' possible bias in their scientific research might actually bias OSHA against the corporations. As chance should have it, maplight.org recently revealed that in the 120 days leading up to that letter being written, those 16 senators got more than $150,000 from the corporations that are against the silica rule change. In other words, the senators had a financial conflict of interest that they did not disclose when arguing against financial conflicts of interest being disclosed. I guess it's unfortunately hardly shocking that a handful of U.S. senators are the surprisingly cheap lapdogs of big corporations. But what I want you to take from this is that the politicians who are working for you are actively working against a very basic level of transparency when it comes to decision making in the government based on science. It shouldn't be a request in one case that corporations reveal financial conflict of interest in scientific studies. 
that should be something that is standard throughout our government. So if you live in Wyoming, Kansas, Oklahoma, Louisiana, Tennessee, South Carolina, Idaho, Florida, Georgia, Alaska, Wisconsin, Illinois, or Utah, please consider calling your piece of shit senator and telling them exactly what you think of these actions.